Hi, so as you'll notice very quickly, I'm American, and that's what my poems are going to be about. And if there's three things I think about when I first imagine America, it's guns, racism, and war. So, yeah. <laughs> so I just have three prose poems I worked on last term, and uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. This one's called Bang. They love to hate him, but he's so Clint Eastwood, so cowboy take me away swagger. It's the smooth way he saunters into a room and commands its silence. And that ergonomic grip makes him irresistible. <laughs> he's a crowd pleaser. You can bet that wherever he goes, he'll be there with a full clip ready to tear into the softest parts of you. He's a god that comes with the trigger finger. I guess that's why he likes churches so much. He can be a teacher, too. He's what happens when one boy walks in with an AR-15 into a classroom. Subtraction. He teaches me things. My little brother holds him in his hands, clasped in prayer-like palms, his index fingers taking aim at my chest. He cocks his thumbs back, and I can hear the click as the bullet enters the chamber. We're playing, he says. Bang, he says. So if you know anything about America, I'm from Chicago, which is not Florida, nor in New York, so probably neither of the places British people know. <laughs> uh, it's in the Midwest. It's a big city, that's all you need to know. Chicago. Lazy sunset light filters in my grandmother's kitchen. She's withered now, her immigrant hands having dug their bounty from this land like her ancestors dug their own graves. My heartbeat is in the tapping of her ladle against the steaming pot as she speaks. The city is made of lines, she says. Some of them are invisible, but you can still feel them there. I think about the lines that divide the north and south side, made of grid-like patterns of streets and avenues. The more I look at them, the more they feel like the bars of a prison cell. There's some neighborhoods you just don't go to, Grandma says, turning, uh, turning to stir her pot. I can see the single scar through her thin blouse that a soldier gave her long ago. It divides her, and between the two lines is a spray of bullets. The body count is in the ridges of her spine. She spoon-feeds me the shell casings, still warm. cross-legged in the grass while we imagined my yard was a rice paddy field. I could still see the plumes of Agent Orange rolling from his mouth when he spoke. His eyes, bloodshot from napalm, never left the sky. He said the worst part about the smell was that you could never wash it out. At night, I still see him standing guard, his feet sunken in the soggy earth, a frozen toy soldier. He stands with the butt of his rifle jammed in his soldier and his shrewd eyes down the sights. He mistakes the bark of neighbor's dogs for Charlie. Gentle midnight winds ruffle his green uniform and I wonder if he still hears the chop of helicopter blades over the patties. If he fears that sound as much as his own heartbeat. At 1.32 a.m. he turns the rifle on himself and pulls the trigger. 